Get over the hump day with an entire show of hot topics. Trump takes action. From building the wall to pushing through the pipelines and investigating voter fraud, is he making good on his campaign promises? Plus, Paris Jackson speaks. Michael's daughter breaking her silence in a bombshell interview. How she was bullied, abused, and why she thinks her dad was murdered. And co-host confessional. Have they ever realized they were the crazy one in a relationship? Let's fire up Hot Topics with Whoopi, Sunny Hostin, Joy Behar, Sarah Haynes, and Jedediah Bila. Now, let's get things started. The new guy, the new president, had a very busy day yesterday, which we'll get into in a bit, but apparently he's still finding the time to look into something that's truly bothering him since the election. Take a look. Does the president believe that millions voted illegally in this election, and what evidence do you have of widespread voter fraud in this election, if that's the case? The president does believe that. He has stated that before. I think he stated his concerns of uh, voter fraud and, and people voting illegally during the campaign. And he continues to maintain that belief based on studies and evidence that people have presented to him. Um, so I call that alternative fact number one. Yeah. <laughs> The reason is because, you remember Jill Stein when she was petitioning for a recount? Yeah. His guys argued and said, uh, all available evidence suggests that the 2016 election was not tainted by fraud or mistake. So which is it? Those were his well, lawyers. Those are his lawyers. Mm -hmm. So I assume they spoke to him but the other thing and mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> the other Maybe thing not. that's interesting is that Spicer said that the reason that Trump believed this was because there was a 2014 study by Jesse Richmond and David Ernest who found more than 14% of non-citizens in 2008 and 2010 mm -hmm. indicated that they were registered to vote. However, it's been debunked because the people that funded the study President Trump said that these same researchers spoke with voters later and discovered that they had all mistakenly clicked the wrong button and that they were actually citizens. So he's relying on a study that was false. You know well, what? If, if, the election, fact number two. if the election was rigged and uh, there's voter for it, I say let's do it over again. <laughs> alternative facts. Well, mm -hmm. Spicer was on uh, Sean Hannity on Fox last night, and he uh, was trying to explain the, they compared alternative facts to a varying weather report. And he said, oh. the press was trying to make it seem like we were ignoring the facts when the facts are that sometimes. You look at a situation the same way you can look at a weather report. One weather report comes out and says it's going to be cloudy, and the next one says there's going to be light rain. <laughs> no one lied to you. Um, that's alternative fact number two. Number three. That's not the. It's, well, this that's is crazy. Like Judge Judy's book. Don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. Yeah. Yeah. I like Sean Spicer's yeah. approach in the clip we just showed. When mm -hmm. he says the president believes that and keeps yes. pushing it off, I think you can trust him a little more with his words. But I know an eighth grade English teacher once told me, once you've found you found you've dug yourself in a hole, stop digging. Yeah. 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 Well, Wise you know, words. Well, keep, keep, yeah. keep in mind that this is, you know, this goes along with the millions of Muslims that he apparently saw on a video somewhere in New Jersey. Everybody in New Jersey was like, what? Yeah. I mean, so it's like, you know, I, 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 I understand it, but you should, you know, <laughs> but what, it, it just, you know, there is no voter fraud. There no. is. And if you really believe there is voter fraud, and apparently he does, and he says they're going to investigate it, then Good. we want you to do it 
with an uninterested party. Mm -hmm. That's who we want to investigate this. An objective third party. An objective party. third yeah. party, maybe from Russia. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's interesting to me about this is that he, he won the election. You, you know, typically you see this kind of activity from someone who didn't win, coming back and saying, well, the reason I didn't win is X, Y. You won the election. You're, you're the president now. Get over it he and get on to politics. He wants the popular vote. He wants the popular vote as but well. Now, if he was going to have a conversation, I think there are conversations to be had about, and we have them here at the table, voter ID laws, good idea, bad idea. If he wants to have a conversation about important issues related to voting, fine. That's great. I, I actually support voter ID laws in many, for many reasons. That's fine. We can disagree. We can debate. We can talk it out. But you can't say that the reason I didn't win the popular vote is because of this if there's no proof of that. You don't because get to do that. Further, though. He's saying he's saying that now yeah, he's going to... people care. But he may not care. He's going further because now he's saying that he's going to open up investigations and he's really going down a bad path well, because... Well, let him there investigate was a, it. But there was... But no, we'll because there was that. a five-year... Exactly. There was a five-year probe that the Bush administration started on voter fraud mm -hmm. and the Department of Justice led that and it led to a lot of resignations and yep. a lot of our taxpayer dollars, not... Does Not any, Trump's taxpayer anybody, dollars, but ours being used. Yes. Does anybody think that maybe this is all a red herring to distract America from, <laughs> from, from, wait, from looking at this extreme reactionary agenda that he is pushing through? I don't well, think his agenda is reactionary, reactionary well, come though. Come on, come on. This is his agenda, when I look at his agenda, you could disagree with it. It's exactly what he said he was going to okay, do. So I mean, this point, is what people voted for that, that voted point, for him. Yeah. His voters yeah. said, and that, that Selena Zito, I believe her name mm -hmm. is, uh, she's a not a Trump supporter. She's a journalist right. okay. who understands the Trump vote is mined. And she said, <laughs> 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 we have to understand people's minds. Yeah. She said that his voters did not. T they took him seriously, but not literally. Oh, right. Whereas the liberal media took him literally, literally. and yes. literally he is doing exactly what, what he, he said he was going to do. So they were right. I mean, yeah. I'm a center yeah. right person. I'm looking at the agenda. I'm not surprised by any of it. I'm not. I'm, oh, this is shocking. exactly what I. I thought uh, he was to do. overthrow the Down EPA, can, well, we, to let's overthrow let's get Obama, to an AIDS. AIDS. We can let's start we're from here to so <laughs> that we can get into yeah. everything. Right. AIDS to uh, the new president. Leak some details to the Washington Post about his somewhat erratic behavior since the election. Uh, supposedly was very enraged when he saw how the Women's March kind of overshadowed oh, yeah. mm -hmm. the inauguration coverage. Yeah. I mean... And it's just, I'm still, so the question is, <laughs> you know, what's happening? Because he's doing everything. You're right. He's doing everything he said he was going to do. Sure. See, we did take him literal. We took him literal. Yeah. That's why people were upset. Yeah. It, they knew what he was going to do, and they voted for him anyway. For him. So, okay, so now that you're looking at all of this, and you're saying, so, the, the, we're now going to pay for some wall? Yeah, that, yeah. you know, that you say you're going to build. So he's written that, and we're not taking care of, you know, different countries who we help with various things. And the Netherlands said, well, you know, we'll step in and do that. Do you think that he believes he's going to be able to do everything with no problem? You think he's not going to have a problem with it, with the blocking of the EPA and the media? I think that he has everything on his side right now, and that's what's frightening about democracy right now. Every branch of government is a Republican. He, everyone in his cabinet agree, is on Do his team. Do you think they don't see this, though? Well, I don't you know who's going care? to oppose him. Look at the way McCain has buckled down. Look at the way um, uh, the way Marco Rubio. Remember the conversation? And I said to you, he's not going. Yeah. He's going to vote for Tillerson. Mm -hmm. He acts like, oh, I don't like it, and then he votes for him. I mean, mm -hmm. everything is going his way, which is why I don't why, know why he's so intent on doing these executive actions. Boom, 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 boom. Well, he's every got the vote. Well, president does that. I mean, President mm -hmm. Obama issued like more executive orders. Maybe he's afraid orders. he's going to get impeached, and he no, has to listen, do it fast. I, no, maybe that's it. Do this. They all do this. They do. President Obama issued more executive orders than yeah, any he president had, had to date. And no, I that's remember, not, uh -uh, wait that a is minute, not he true. said, that is not true. I remember, no, no, <laughs> it's, no, no, that's not true. It's, it's actually, it's not I true. He's done a lot of them, but he has them. not done the most. And I remember a quote from him, I don't know if I have it here, but I, I sort of remember it, this isn't verbatim, where he was saying, I have a pen and a phone, and that was how he was going to govern. When he couldn't get stuff through Congress, as many that's presidents do, that's why he did it. I don't like, I don't like executive orders. On his side, well, he has to. He doesn't have so to do it. Sorry. So did he. <laughs>
This one beats me up every day, and now she's complaining that I'm screaming. Let's, let's bring our voices I down. I pull your bring hair. our voices down I, a notch. I think, the, I think the difference in what you're saying in terms of executive action yeah. is at least it took Obama at least a couple of months in. This one has come in, and he said, we're doing this and this and this. And, and I understand that, I, because all presidents have these And I don't like it across do. the board. I don't like executive orders in general. I yeah. think it's a bad idea, because I think that branches of government exist for a reason, <laughs> and they're supposed to be checks on your power. Well, so I opposed it when right. he did it, and I oppose it when Trump is doing it. But do you see but, that there's a difference that one needs to do it, and the other one doesn't no, need because, to do it? No, because, look, President Obama had, you forget, had Congress with him. There was a Democratic Congress for when he started out his presidency. He had their support. When but he didn't do executive come, orders. In the, he didn't do it in the, the beginning. I'm saying is second, second have, year. I'm all, just saying. All I'm saying is elections have consequences. When when people that. dislike what's happening in the country, they vote in a Democrat, and sometimes they vote in a Democrat. Isn't it true they're doing that he's doing exactly what his voters wanted yes. him to do? Yes, this is they, what I, they I don't think they're surprised at all. I think they are. I, in no. Don't look. I don't the think, think they're surprised. Listen, I'm not surprised. I'm saying I wasn't surprised. I've been yeah. saying he's going to do exactly what he said. Yeah. Everybody else was like, well, let's see. I said, no. no when you see who he right. surrounded that's himself he with, us. that's what he's going to do. So what can we do? I'll, we'll talk about that yeah. when we come back. Yeah. 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 Coming up, pet paternity suits. Why custody of dogs, cats, and other critters is now on the table in some divorce courts. said the new president's made good on many of his campaign promises. Yesterday, he halting immigration from some Middle Eastern countries, promising a big announcement on the border wall, which I really don't want to pay for. <laughs> okay, because you said, you said, <laughs> we're going to make them do it. Yeah. Well, how's he going to get you're the, <laughs> uh, I mean, you're the big negotiator, right? You're the big dog negotiating dude. Make them pay for and it. The price tag is fifteen billion to twenty-five nice. billion dollars, nice. right out of our yeah. pockets. That's the price tag, everyone. And you didn't say we were going to be doing that. Yeah. Because I think people would have said, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or as Christella yeah. said, you know, there are many more tunnels. Maybe we should think about that, huh? Well, the, the truth of the matter is that people who are coming in illegally are flying in. They're not really jumping over the wall. They're flying, and the airports are taking care of this. It's, it's another I don't know. I just know that it was not something that we were, uh, that the American taxpayer was supposed One to be paying. One of the things he's the proposing, though, is to uh, fix the infrastructure, which will probably cost a lot of money. I will guarantee you the Republicans will, be, will not go along with that. But that because that will important? actually help yeah. the country. You're talking about roads, bridges. Yes, roads, bridges, bridges air water, air, air pollution, no, all that. Do, let me tell you why they will do it. So yeah. they can say, yeah, we, we took care of it. We did this. We fixed the country. Because remember, Obama said, listen, we got to take care of this. We got to do this. They said, no. No, we're not doing it. Don't we don't see what you're it. talking about. And so, listen, anything they can get done that where they can say, see, he's doing his job. You know, advancing the Keystone and Dakota Pipeline. You know, that's, you know, people are trying to check out and make sure that there's not going to be any issues for people's water drinking water you know the the army corps of engineers said just hold up we want to see yeah. what we need to do mm -hmm. you know so let them do that but how about this the supposed uh media blackout on the ep <laughs> on epa i mean is that it's like the secret make service everybody, the well, kgb <laughs> I'm, I'm most concerned um, about this Muslim ban, um, actually. I, I spoke to my friend Amna Nawaz. She's an ABC News correspondent. If people don't know who she is, please look her up. Um, she, she's one of our Muslim journalists. Spell and what her she, name. Uh, Amna, A-M-N-A, Nawaz. N-A-W-A-Z. Yes, Nawaz. Okay. Um, what she told me just this morning was that this Muslim ban was already in effect mm -hmm. post 9-11. Yes. And it was a reactionary policy. And what we found was they used the data, they, they, um, got all the data. They got all the data. Didn't and then find they, anybody. They didn't find anybody. It yeah. didn't lead to one conviction, one terror charge. But what it did do is it created a database of more than 80,000 young men, most of whom had broken no laws. They had committed no crime, but just happened to be from a certain country. And what it did was it rose and grew this anti-American sentiment. Right. And, and I, I'm right. just so surprised that Trump is willing to do that again when we already know that it was a failed policy that President Obama 
repealed just in December. But it looks good. You see, it looks good. It looks like he's it's tough not, on terror. It's not yeah. smart. It but it's not, it has nothing it's to do with to fail. Has not, listen, it's, it has nothing to do with being smart. Like 9 yeah. It's playing on fear. It's playing it on has, It's what it looks like. It's, the, it's, a it's what it looks people. like, basically. That's I, I, I what just, it is. I, I just don't understand it. It, I, just, it. It's already been a failed policy. Why well, would you renew he's that? He's going to have to do some research. I mean, you know he's smart. <laughs> when you talk about what. Well, he is. Because when you talk about waterboarding, if you remember, we, you know, he had had conversations where he supported waterboarding, and then he said he talked to some military officials, some military generals, and they came back yeah, and, and said, actually, there's no proof that this actually it helps works. us yeah. in oh, yeah. our fight against terrorism, and he reversed his decision. So he, I don't uh, know that all of this stuff is going to go through. I will say with respect to Keystone and stuff like that, that, that doesn't surprise me because people on the right, many people voted for him because he was going to support energy infrastructure, and that's what it looks like. Keystone has been under, I did a lot of research on Keystone. I care very much about the environment, as many people People know it has been under environmental review by the State Department there have been four environmental reviews done on Keystone in particular and a fifth final statement that was released and what they found was that it was a minimal threat to the environment meaning wildlife really? why, the didn't, soil. No. why didn't that's they put it where research. they originally wanted to put it they wanted to put it in a neighborhood that said we don't want it yeah let's start with that well, wait a minute and what about the Native Americans? They moved it yeah. to the Native Americans who said you know the pipelines going over our drinking water sources For Dakota. And so there was all this yeah. Yeah. And now, you know, the Army Corps of Engineers said, listen, let us just see what the best thing to do is. As long as he listens to the Army Corps of Engineers, um, I, he can do whatever he wants. But I just feel like, you know, this thing was moved from a neighborhood of folks who, said, who had the power to say, we don't want this here. Yeah. Okay. Well, my, my problem is the gag order, Department. though. Uh, the gag and, 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 and the reason I, I will distinguish that is if what Jed said is right, is this is why people voted for him, yeah. mm -hmm. then he should stand behind that and own that. Mm -hmm. By shutting people up that disagree or yep. want to speak out like national parks and right. say, uh -huh. this is what's going on, because mm -hmm. even though he put that gag order on, the uh, Badlands National Park tweeted anyway and yes. said one of the tweets was, um, in fact, they did multiple tweets. Yeah. One was, today the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is higher than at any time in the last 650,000 years hashtag climate mm -hmm. since then mm -hmm. all of those tweets have been taken down but not before everyone's screen grabbed them and mm -hmm. so they will eventually probably find this person so people are already tweeting at this rogue <laughs> environmentalist saying thank you for promoting science when you inevitably get fired let me know so i can pass along your resume yeah. <laughs> but yeah. i yeah. think that the gag is yes. the part that scares and me. you know the other yeah. thing is you know he he had this tweet yesterday you know he's been talking about what's going on in the inner cities yeah. and uh sort of tweeted at rahm emanuel and chicago that he was going to send in the feds if they didn't, uh, here it is, if they don't fix the horrible carnage going on. Now, carnage is a very, it, you know, it's, it's a word that you only use when you've seen carnage. Yes. Mm, if yeah. you've never seen carnage, you can talk about all the stuff that's going in in all our inner cities. Yes. But using those words are inflammatory. Yes. But the idea that you're going to send the feds in it's, when it's, the governor hasn't said, hey, listen, we're having trouble. Can you come in? Can you send us? Because that's starting to smack a martial law. Somebody told me he's yeah. really, actually, he was pissed at, um, pissed at with Rahm, Rahm Emanuel. Yeah. It, it's so typical of him. Rahm Emanuel some, says something against him, and then he's talking about the carnage. It's like tit for tat, this guy. Everything's personal, you know? But, it's, but, but you know, it, I, get, I understand it. I'm fine with it, but there are things you can't do. You start talking about sending feds in, to a state that no one has asked them for, that says to me, again, martial law, which no one, I don't think we need. I don't think it's good to black things out because you said you wanted to keep the government out of everything, and here you come. Yeah. With all, dragging the government in. Well, when it suits, and do, uh, when, when it and suits him. That's well, I think the it. bigger issue, though, yeah. is that he's doing it. He, this isn't a private conversation he's having behind the scenes with officials no. from other countries. Yeah. He's tweeting it out. And yes. if that, honestly, if that was where your head was, you shouldn't be releasing all of that information to the public via Twitter because you also think about terrorism and things like Gotta that. Go. That's not how we'll you operate. We'll be right back with more. Yeah. Yeah. We'll come back.
Before we went to break, I, I cut you off. What were you trying to I, say? I was just, when, when, when Trump tweets uh, about Chicago and he says that there were 228 shootings in 2017 and 42 killings, up 24% from 2016, that is true. But I don't think the real problem, which is we need to reduce gun violence. And so if he were, if, if he were talking about that kind of policy, I think that would be very important. And Representative Gutierrez um, issued this statement. He said, when the president wants to work with states and localities on public policies to reduce gun violence, he will find partners in cities like Chicago, but I think he'd rather spend his time on Twitter. And, 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 and that's really it in a nutshell. I mean, we need to start talking about uh, instead of carnage, re real policies that reduce gun violence. Well, they believe the more guns you have, the less violence you'll have. That's what they believe and, on that side. And this that former is federal they prosecutor yeah, is because will tell you it's you're not You're arming true. people who are law-abiding citizens, and you're, those people who have guns that are criminals are going to get them anyway, and you want people who are law-abiding citizens to be able to counter criminals. Chicago has the strictest gun control laws, some of the strictest gun control laws in the country, and they have a ton of gun violence. So you agree with that? I'm a pro-Second Amendment girl. If you are a law-abiding citizen, and you make it through your background checks, I want you to be able to well, go Well, that's the key. You just, said the, you just said the background key. Checks. You just said the key. I support you know, background you, checks, I do. You know, there's a great book that, uh, that I've been listening to. Uh, the liberal. With the liberal. Redneck. Redneck liberal. Redneck. And the, the guy is brilliant. I mean, if you don't know really this, it's brilliant. Let's get him on the and show. Yes, we're, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been working on that. Okay. Um, okay. That's good. Say what? Next month. Next month. Oh, good. So, you know, him talking about, because he's a guy from the South, okay? Yeah. And he is, and he said, listen, there's a lot of us down here, but don't misunderstand me. They hunt, they shoot, they have a good time. But he said, we don't have any issues with background checks. Right. He said, if we're trying to do background checks on people who may be <laughs> mentally challenged or there should be, they have all kind of criminal background, if you're complaining about it, he said, then I'm going to assume that you, you're mentally challenged or you got a criminal background. Yeah. You have no reason not to accept a, a, a background a check, yeah. Yeah. ever. Yes, I, had a I had a conversation with someone in Texas mm -hmm. about that and asked him about that and because he supports, he's a Second Amendment guy, he supports background checks, and he said that a lot of the people who oppose it feel that it's a slippery slope. Their argument is that it's going to go from back background checks to limiting the types of guns you can have to limiting the ammo you can have to suddenly well, your second and and say, say, on, the on the other side of this is one of Donald's sons Hans or Fritz I don't know which one it is <laughs> I think it's Junior Junior Donald Junior believes that not only should everybody have a gun, but they should all have a silencer on their guns. Now, if you're at the airport and you're on level two and there's a gun fight on level one, you should be able to hear that yeah. so that you can get the hell out of there. Yeah. So on top of all this, they want to put a silencer on the, on, now that is when you shoot someone, want to kill somebody yeah. and you don't want anybody to hear you. What is going <laughs> Thank on? Thank you for explaining the silencer. Where is this country <laughs> going? <laughs> yeah. You know, listen, you there, so there are a lot today. of ways. <laughs> Sister, you never yeah, I know, it's true. I'm, I'm an only child, you know what I mean? I would have swatted you. So. <laughs> Welcome to Bitch Fight 101. <laughs> and, we, and actually, we like each other. Too. I love her. But, that, but, but there, are a lot of, there are a lot of issues that if people come at you the right way, yeah. You know, if if it was about, hey, how, what can I do to help Chicago? Yes. Can I help you? Yeah. Yes. As opposed to, you know, I don't like what you said, so I'm going to mess with you on Twitter. That mm -hmm. that's not that's not the way to go. Now I know a lot of people love him. They love what he does. They love what he says. But you know, when you hear a lie, I believe everybody's parents said to them, "Don't lie." Yes. If you hear a lie, yeah, right. recognize it. You know a lie. why they who loves and, and I'll tell you who loves it. Donald Trump? Rich people because today the Dow hit the Dow oh, hit 20,000 points, which is the highest ever. Yeah. So people who are in the stock market. That would have happened. Market, it went yeah. to 19. But couldn't that yeah. be good for the country, though, I in all so. fairness? I, I hope mean, so. Yeah, but don't underestimate, too, there are a lot of people who were struggling, who voted for him because they thought he was going to help them out, who also are bothered when he does some of these things on Twitter, who also are saying, hey, yes. I voted for you because I thought you were going to help me, you know, keep more of my hard-earned cash and we're going to help my Obamacare premiums yeah. go down. But I also don't like what you're doing here. So they're holding him to account, yeah, too. I, 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 and I, I'm thrilled with that yeah. because that's the dialogue you want to have. Yes. Yes. That's right. the what, do, what do you want, son? I have a correction I have <laughs> to make. Um, we, we said earlier today that there were executive actions um, already in place. That's not true. Sources are telling us that uh, President Trump will unveil executive actions on immigration 
today. Yeah. So still to be determined. Yeah, it's, it's going to, there's lots well, of... And while you're out. doing Where's that, I want to tip my hat to you. I, I, has, I had said earlier before that Obama issued more executive orders than any president, and that's actually incorrect. I made a mistake. What I, oh. what I, what I do know is that he issued executive orders in his first week of office, much like many presidents do. Mm -hmm. But you are 100% right, and I like to give credit where it's due. All right, thank Who you. Who did? Well, turn it is fact check. Goes back. Oh. That's our fact check. I'm going to Well, you know, a lot of people blame their partner for messing up their relationship. <laughs> but a woman posted a. a on a blog website, lifestyle website, Elite Daily, after she suddenly realized that it turns out she was the crazy <laughs> in that relationship. <laughs> Does anybody else know how she feels? <laughs> you, is there Look, crazy in your uh, relationship? A cray cray in a relationship is, is good because you have a little spice, you have a little fire. Well, we know what you did. I don't remember a day when I wasn't the crazy one. Yeah. I'm, I'm the crazy one in our relationship. I realized that the day that I, uh, my husband hung up the, my soon-to-be husband hung up the phone on me, and I went into a his house. A day that will live in infamy. And I took all of his phones. <laughs> I did. I went, took all of his phones, and I walked out into the highway, and I threw all the phones on the highway, and I told him he didn't have phone etiquette, and he didn't need phones. <laughs> and then I realized that maybe I was the crazy one. Yeah. But it's 20 years later, and he loves me because I'm spicy. <laughs> Spicy. Crazy nope. became spicy very nope. fast. <laughs> Look, Cray Cray's good for a relationship. No, Cray Cray's not good for a relationship, babe. No? No. Look, no. Phone, Whoopi phone, wrote a book you know, about it. I, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I, you can be crazy on your own when you go around your house, but you know what? You need to be face to face with the person. You can't be cray cray in the relationship. That just, that make, would make me cray. I, I don't know what I would do because yeah. you would never know if you could depend on somebody if they're crazy. See, crazy is, you gotta be careful. I think in my relationship, yeah. I think Steve would say that I was the sane one. And if he doesn't say that, I'll kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I've met Steve. He's so sweet. Yeah. So we know you're the crazy one, apparently. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm, I'm and so what about you? I, it depends. <laughs> I, I had a moment. I, I dated a guy who was, ter he was incredibly stable. He was, it was hard to rattle him, and I tried, believe me, but <laughs> he was very, very measured, and I was crazy in that relationship, and it was a turning point for me, because mm -hmm. when I, I, I had a moment where I kind of looked at myself, I was screaming irrationally, it made no sense, there was no reason why, pulling a Sarah, as I say. <laughs> and crazy, I went you? crazy, I, 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 I punched a wall, I was oh, over no wow. and I, I had a moment where I looked in the wow. mirror, I did, and I was like, whoa, I'm, I'm nuts, I'm off the wall. And I changed after that, and since then, I'm yeah, much yeah. more stable, not fully. <laughs> But yeah. I'm still a little spicy, as Sonny would say. Spicy. But um, I did realize that that can be really toxic to a balanced person. Yeah. Because if you're, if you're crazy and you're with a crazy person, you yeah. kind of both get it. But if you're crazy True. and somebody's <laughs> measured, they're like, I can't handle they this can't kind handle of crazy. It. And you can't really break other people's things when you're having the <laughs> spicy moment. You threw a dish, didn't you, or a bowl? Well, what I do now, I don't do it right now, but what I started doing was I just broke my own stuff, which... <laughs> My husband said, make me crazier, because who breaks their own stuff? <laughs> wow. But I don't break other people's things anymore. I did throw some plates, but they were my plates. Well, see, I don't, <laughs> I don't destroy property. I just, like, I have this one thing where I call back and keep calling back, even with my husband. Like, when he doesn't pick up and I want to tell him something and get it off my plate. Yes. Uh, I call and call and call, and he'll call back, and he's like, sweetie, you called eight times in a row. <laughs> I understood you called. I saw the missed call. I was gonna get back to you. Like, and I sometimes forget that's annoying. Yeah. But maybe it's... it's... I said you were annoying before. Did yeah. I... You hit that nail on the head. <laughs> it's spicy. I used to be the type where I would start really calm. I would start a conversation really calm. But sometimes they're calm. Like, I'd be like, I'm saying something, and I, you're not, you're supposed not to be upset about what I'm saying, and they wouldn't get upset, so I'd get more upset. And by the end, he was super calm still, and I was like, I looked like a, I had been electrocuted. My therapist I was, yeah. calls that. That used to happen to me. Yeah. My therapist calls it the dance. 
the dance? What you were doing the dance. I don't know. The yep. dance? Yeah, you pull didn't feel like a dancer, dance. then you keep going. It's not like a sexy dance. I don't know how you girls, I don't know how you girls stay married. I really don't. I'm not married. I've only, made, it's I've so only made it two years, out. Joy. It could happen any day 18. now. 18. There's a lot of acting out on this one here. You the best. 18. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I have to say, I did not. I did not stay married because I acted out here and there. You don't stay married That's when you act I like changed. that. That's oh, why I changed. That's why I have we'll changed. Like yeah. I have you all. Yeah. Jackson's daughter Paris opens up to Rolling Stone magazine in a wide-ranging interview. She talks about being bullied, sexually assaulted by a stranger, and her loving relationship with her father Michael, whom she believed was murdered. And she was, uh, Michael was very protective of her, of her privacy. And so, uh, I get the question that's on the thing there says, you know, what do you think about why do you think she's speaking out now? I think she's speaking out now because she's strong enough to say, listen, here's what I think. Yeah. Here's how I feel. Stop questioning who my father is. I told you that's my dad. I don't mm -hmm. care what anybody else. She, I think she's answered. She's, I think, old enough now to answer people in a way that's comfortable for her to say, quit asking me these stupid questions. Yeah. Well, she also said somewhere in regard to fame, um, she said to use it to draw attention to favored causes. She said, I was born with this platform. Am I gonna waste it and hide away or am I going to make it bigger and use it for more important things? Mm -hmm. So that could probably She's work. She's stronger. Yeah. She's much yeah. stronger. I, I yeah. think um, what, what was also interesting is that um, she said, I consider myself black. She said her father would look her in the eyes and he'd point his finger and say, you're black, be proud of your roots. Yeah. And, and, and that, that to me was wonderful. Um, but oh, what but was also kind of, um, I, it was difficult for me to read was that she's tried to kill herself multiple times mm -hmm. in the years after her yeah. father's death. So she's really struggling with that, but she's obviously strong she's enough now, now to come forward. But she also seems very fascinated with death because um, she's a frequent visitor to the Museum of Death, which mm -hmm. is this really gory tourist attraction in Hollywood. Um, and Not she's that visited. Gory. Well, she's visited nine times. It has all these autopsy photos yeah. there. And I, I just remember decapitation photos. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've been to crime scenes. I've, I've been I, I've been to autopsies, and you can't unsee it, and it's really jarring. A lot of people vomit when they go to that museum, and I'm Ooh. surprised that she has that uh, fascination with the. She might be seeking death. answers, though. Yeah. Like, when yeah. you think of her father yeah, having yeah. passed and, and yeah. not being able to remedy yeah. it, yeah. I, I she, don't she think may it's a be fascination. I think it's just. It. I think it is. You know, when you <laughs> when you're as famous as she was as a little baby. Yeah. You know, people, everything that she did, everybody had something to say about it. And I think the things that she's done now and the things that she's talking about are important for her to get out so that people know that she is okay and that she's gotten, she's grown enough to say, listen, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to do. And yeah, I'm going to go and look at these things because I'm going to get stronger. Maybe that's Maybe what that's it's, what it's it making yeah. her, yeah. you know, because I think it's important because, mm -hmm. man, you know, <laughs> For her to say it out loud, and she doesn't say, I think that man did it, no. which I thought was interesting. No. Yeah. She says she thinks oh, it's a conspiracy. Uh, Conrad, Conrad Murray. Conrad Murray. Yeah. She doesn't say, I think he was part of a conspiracy. No. She says, I think there was a conspiracy to kill my dad. And that, you know, and when other people said it earlier, mm -hmm. everybody poo pooed it. Now she's saying it, so we'll see, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah. And if you and your uh, partner, <laughs> aren't feeling it in the bedroom anymore. Oh, my God. <laughs> Science is on the verge of a quick fix. They call it mental Viagra, mm -hmm. which is an injection that boosts the lust signals in the brain. You know, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> they cannot find a cure for the common cold, and yet all erections are cured. A lack of erections are cured. If you haven't got an interest in that, they suddenly put a lot of money into but that. Who would want a little mental Viagra? I mean, if you think about it, it's supposed to um, give you sort of that feeling that you got in, in puberty. And I just remember oh, I being on a. Puberty. Oh no! I remember the first time I kind of <laughs> fell in love. <laughs> no, and I was riding on. Uh, Eddie Velarde was like riding a bike, and I was sitting on the handlebars, <laughs> and I felt euphoria. It was wonderful. 
wonderful. I don't think I don't that's what it's supposed that. to do. I think it's supposed to make you feel interested in sex again as what as Yeah, yeah. but it's not like mental, it's physical. Sometimes like your body needs to be woke. I need like a one hour energy door to door that's gonna cover it. I just need a little Not a little physically. mental Viagra? No, my mind wants to do so many things, I just can't. <laughs> to work on that. <laughs> A little rhythm wouldn't help. We'll be right back. The View would like to thank Apple and Eve for providing our entire studio audience with a bottle of their delicious juice. To us. So tonight, ABC World News Tonight anchor David Muir has the first interview from the White House with President Donald Trump at 10 p.m. right here on ABC. Check it out. The light applause is telling. <laughs> I think Some it's going to be fantastic. It was huge applause. Thank the you place guys was for coming to the show. We love having you here. We want you to have a great day and take a little time to enjoy the view. <laughs>